folks, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show, joined by myself, Ben, and my colleague Lauren. How are Hi. you? Good. This would be another early episode in 2025. We've yes. already kicked off with our new gear. We're doing a shorter episode today, just a mm-hmm. customer question or, or a common question that we get asked that we'll try and answer uh, off the cuff out yeah. of our little bucket of questions here in yes, the Yes, a little bucket, chalice of bucket questions. Slash uh, stubby cooler slash you want me to pull? Drink or it. do you want to pull? No, we'll do the intro first. Right. Done it. Don't don't rush us. Oh, we do it. We are trying to make it short though, so let's try and keep the banter to a to a minimum. Um if you haven't already subscribed, please do so via YouTube, join in on the conversation at the Snowy's Camping Banter Facebook group and listen in on your favorite podcast and share this with a friend. Let's get heaps of people on board this year, build our community out. So we've got lots of awesome conversations going on. Yeah. So today we've got a little bucket of common customer questions. Now you've got a, you're, you're in the customer service team. So you've got a little thing that's on the wall and you say to your team, get asked it all the time, put it on this list so we can talk about it. And also common questions through the website as well. Common Q and A's and things like that. Yep. Mm. So let's go. We're Let's trying, go. To, trying to make this a, a short episode. Na, na, na. What have we got? Try here? and be concise with our thoughts and answers. Oh, okay, this is a long piece of paper. We've got some short pieces of paper. How long will a rover run a fridge for? Uh, okay. rover. So a rover being very a, common question. Being a power bank by a companion. So yeah, let's, let's like just a, say how, yeah, they, there's a, a range of different rovers, mm-hmm. sizes and capacities from a Rover Go or Rover Light, which are smaller personal ones, through to power stations yep. that have built-in inverters and a 240 volt. So let's just assume we're saying how long will a power station run a fridge because yeah. it's, its question is more tied to the amp hours of the battery Correct. as to how long the fridge will run. Yeah, so I think uh, like, you know, yes, of course, there are lead acid batteries out there at the moment, but if you're buying a power station um, or even sort of any real battery these days, it's more than likely that you're going for a lithium, right? Because even though they're more expensive, the you're maximising what you get for your money. Um, so a lithium battery chemistry, you work off a premise of say 80% of that battery can be used before more charge has to go in. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of using maths then, right? So it's like if you've got a 40, I'm not amazing at maths, right? But if you've got a 40 amp hour battery, like Rover 40 is a really common unit we've had in the past. I'm pretty sure 80% of that is 36 amps. So even though it's a Rover 40, they're just telling you the overall capacity of the battery is 40 amps, but you've got 36 usable amps in there. So then when you're looking at how oh, how long is that going to run my fridge for, then it's just a matter of on a very, very basic level, just having a look at the specifications of the fridge that you have and what its power consumption is, and then dividing your 36 usable amps with your, your fridge consumption. So if if you if we keep nice round numbers, if your fridge runs like at draws two, two amps, amps, you're going to get about 18 hours of runtime. Yes, out of that battery. Correct. Not exact science though. It's, no, it's a roughly. Yeah, it's not an exact science because there are so many variables to it. You know, how full your fridge is, whether or not you've pre-cooled it before, the ambient temperature, like if you're camping in winter versus camping in summer, obviously you're going to get drastically different power consumption from your fridge. Um, Overnight even, you might drop down to less than an amp in consumption because it's cooler overnight. Nobody's opening your fridge. There's nothing being moved around. So the internal temperature is a lot more stable. You're not drawing uh, drawing the same amount of power power. Um, but that gives you a rough guide. Um, but I have heard of people, for example, using a Rover 40 with a like 35, 40 litre camp fridge and going away on a Friday afternoon and coming home on a Sunday, which is obviously more than 18 hours, but getting that whole weekend out of their Rover without issue. You should premise that if your fridge says it runs at two amps per hour, that's if it ran flat out, nonstop, didn't cut in and out. For an entire hour, it would use two amps. So when yeah. you say at night, well, when or it's I think cool, it's even um, they do some of them do specify the testing conditions, how they how long they've run it for, and it's like an average. Uh, yeah, so they have an oh yes, okay, so they yeah, I see what you mean, and they would specify what temperature they they tested in. But I know for angle, for example, they say mm. two point eight amps. So if that ran flat out for two point eight amps, it would run uh, for an hour it would pull 2.8 amps yeah. if that rang continually for an hour. Yeah. But that doesn't always happen at night. If a temperature drops down really cold mm-hmm. and your fridge doesn't need to run, it, it might use no 
amps for an hour because I might not need to cut cut in. Yeah, and so, it, like you say, it might not use any amps for a while and then it might cut in and have a really big spike while it's running through its duty cycle or its cooling cycle or whatever. Um, but, yeah, just looking at the average, that's what sort of gives you a bit of a ballpark. You are right, sorry. So the likes of Dometic will give you an average over in, in certain conditions. The yeah. ambient 34 degrees. Um, yeah, they'll give three or four different yeah, specs. Yeah, there'll be like yeah. ambient temperature 34, fridge running at four degrees, That's right, yeah. this amount of consumption or whatever. Yeah, so many variables. Yeah, but I think, um, yeah, just using that as an average ballpark and you can use the same premise on if you're looking at, oh, okay, well, I want to run a fridge and I also want to run some lights and I run want to run this. You just add up all of your ampage together um, yep. and sort of that gives you a bit of an idea. If you have a sealed lead acid battery, the older style, you've only got 50% of that capacity. So if that Rover that we're talking about was a 40-hour 40 40 sealed amp. lead acid, you've only got 20 amps roughly. So 10, a, 10 hours then of a two-amp fridge That's right. on the same so It's quite, quite detailed. We do have a blog that covers this that I wrote many, many years ago. Mm. We probably need to update it with some lithium things. We'll mm. put the link uh, in our product description. Yeah. Have a read of that uh, to help you understand it. But yes. And it's probably also um, worth mentioning that this this is in a context of not having a solar panel or not having any uh, input to charge your battery or keep mm-hmm. that topped up. So in the event that you might have a small solar panel connected, you're obviously your fridge will be able to run pretty much permanently mm-hmm. and you, you're going to have – you know, that 18 hours in the bank just in case you have cloud or a rainy day or not efficient solar, you know that's how long your fridge is going to run for on the battery and the battery alone. On a sunny day, the solar is probably going to provide enough power to charge the battery and run the fridge. Yeah, and I think that's also another consideration is when you're looking at, okay, I've got this battery and I want to run this fridge, but I also want a solar panel. What size solar panel am I going to need and blah, blah, blah. Well, if all you're running is your fridge and your fridge is only drawing two amps, then as long as your solar panel realistically is producing more than two amps into your battery, it's going to offset for those mm. for the sunny period of the day. Um, so there's no reason why you have to go with a big stonk and huge solar panel, you know, if you've just got a small setup or maybe you're just getting started and you want you got a smaller fridge and you just want a smaller battery to cover you. So that's, we could go into so much detail here, but the basics of yeah. it is 80% of the battery capacity for lithium, 50% for sealed lead acid, then take your fridge drawer, yep. divide that by um, that percentage of uh, you've of got left. Hours, uh, so yeah. in our instance, it was 40, 80% of 40 is 36. So you've got 36 hours divided by two is 18. Yep. That's the basic formula that you can use to work out roughly how long your fridge is going to run. Yeah. Hope that helps. If you have any questions or anything else, to add to that, if you're in, you know, experienced camper or even just starting out and there are things that you found helpful to work off of, uh, let us know. Cool. We'll see you next time. Catch you later. Thanks. Thanks.